If I look back over the last decade, we've certainly created quite a range of, of visual effects miniatures. We've created tabletop miniatures, we've created large environment miniatures, we've created miniatures that never ended up being in front of a film camera, but instead went through photogrammetry and 3D scanning to get into the visual effects pipeline. But if I had to sort of pick one that I think exemplifies what it is that people think of when they think of visual effects miniatures, it's probably what we built for uh, NBC Universal last year for their uh, season two opener of Quantum Leap. Um, they asked us to create a Soviet era, 1980s Russian SAM missile base. And they needed to use it for both location plates and they needed to blow it up for the finale of the episode. So that kind of checks a lot of boxes in the fun factor for me. So um, we started off by doing some research on you know, what the weapon systems looked like at that point in time and uh, you know how best to make that kind of fit with the aesthetic that they wanted to create. Uh, they had one picture that they'd sent as reference, which was of the very large array dishes in New Mexico, and they liked the look of those dishes. So that's basically where I started in the design process. I reduced the scale of the dish to about 50 feet in diameter and made it a one-tenth scale model. Um, now, one-tenth scale pyro definitely works, um, but it looks different than if you did it at quarter scale, obviously. So, you know, tenth scale is kind of pushing the boundaries of what you can make look realistic with in-camera pyro. I designed the miniature from the ground up with the basic idea that this has to be a double feature miniature. It's got to be um, camera ready to be a hero location miniature to be, you know, photorealistic as that, but also be something that blows up in a very convincing, very believable way. Um, and that's, that's an interesting challenge because a lot of the time, you know, your miniature is one or the other, it's not both. I started by designing the, the entire miniature in a piece of software called Shaper that I like to use. It's a sort of a tactile software, so you're drawing, but you're also using your hands to extract and shape and do that kind of thing on the iPads. I designed the dish as a 27 segmented dish with each segment having seven different wedge shaped panels in it. And then basically the idea was that we would 3D print one copy of each of those seven sections of a segment and then make two part molds of those 3D prints and then cast them in a breakaway resin. Once we had all the castings done, we would assemble all of those pieces into the dish. And that sounds like you're asking for trouble because you're taking a hundred different wedged pieces and you're assembling them all and hoping that when you get to the, the final piece that everything fits together and you're putting it together over a compound curve. So there's a lot of variables that can creep in, but because we, we started with a 3D printed version that was precise to 25 microns, you are starting from the best possible position. And because you've designed the entire thing in the computer, you have eliminated a lot of variables that can creep in if you're doing work by hand. Now, back in the day, you would have probably tried to do this as more of a large sheet uh, version of a satellite dish and then structurally weakened it after it was fabricated to break apart. What I wanted to do was do it as all individual panels so that when it blows up, all those individual pieces are going to break on their own, but they're also going to fly apart in a very convincing way as you know, larger sections. So I wanted that, that real dynamic look you would get from having it be a whole bunch of individual panels as opposed to you know, a big dish shape that you're, you're blowing up. The dish itself was held together by CNC cut aluminum trusses combined with laser cut MDF trusses that would break apart uh, with the pyro. And then that was supported by a Baltic plywood base that was the, um, the bunker that the satellite dish sat on. And that was detailed to look like cast concrete to match a, uh, a full size section of set wall that production had made. And then we added, you know, detailing to it to make it look like cast concrete seams. And we added exterior lighting and we added an electrical panel that was sort of key to the story. And we also built a uh, one tenth scale version of a pickup truck that is part of the story and had that as part of the miniature uh, set piece. We also created the SAM missiles themselves and the launchers that they sat on, and those were fairly large too. So like each missile was about four and a half feet long and each launcher was about the same size. Uh, and then we had lighting that we'd incorporated into those where we had 
little miniature spotlights that, that shot light up the side of the missiles and around the bases and sort of self-lit effect. And then of course, we also had the landscape that it sat on. There was a 24 by 32 foot steel deck that uh, the art department put together down on the back lot at Universal. And then we went down and basically dressed everything into that and landscaped it to look like a sort of generic back desert kind of area with scrub brush and gravel and sand and that kind of thing. And then after that, we, we of course got to blow it up. So we spent a night doing, uh, and it's all night shots. So we spent a night doing, um, photographing the dish for beauty shots for establishing location plates. And then the second night we blew it up and uh, basically we, we wrapped the, uh, the backside of the dish in, um, in debt cord. We had mortars inside the bunker aiming up into the bottom of the dish that were loaded with sand to basically shred the dish from underneath. Um, and then we had the deck cord to tear it apart in sort of sequenced explosions. We had uh, butane that we were detonating to sort of backlight the entire thing with a secondary fireball as the main dish is exploding. And it was all time to go off within milliseconds of each other. So um, it was a really fun build to do. And, uh, and then we shot it and it, it came out tremendously well. And, and like I said, it's one of those examples of something that is the kind of miniature that you really look forward to building. You know, large, high detailed, high profile, blowing it up kind of job. You know, I mean, people ask, like, isn't it hard to blow up a miniature after you spent, you know, a month making the thing? And the answer, of course, is no, that's, that's exactly what it's designed to do. You want it to blow up really beautifully. You want it to be shredded into a million pieces and just look incredibly dynamic on screen. That's the goal. The goal is, yes, to make this beautiful looking miniature, but the end goal is to have it blow up and be decimated in exactly the way you want it to. And that's what we got when we did this job for Universal. I'm still very hands-on when it comes to the projects we do here at Creation Consultants. I got into the industry because I loved building miniatures and that hasn't changed. I love detailing and weathering and the design process and engineering and you know adding lighting. All of those, those things that you, you enjoy doing you know, for a hobby, or at least I enjoyed doing for a hobby, I do professionally. And, you know, I have a shelf full of model kits in the wood shop that I hope someday I'll get to build. But in the meantime, I'm building the things that I get paid to build. Um, and I enjoy it tremendously. So, uh, like when, when I had this new space built out, uh, I told them, don't put walls on my office. I want to feel like I'm still on the floor, you know, so I'm still intimately involved with the creation of everything that we do here at the company, um, whether it's, you know, design or painting or what have you. Now, depending on the project, sometimes you have to spend more time on management and you end up delegating the things that you really enjoy doing. But for the most part, I, I, still, I still build. I love to build. I love that process. I love filming the miniatures. I love blowing up the miniatures when that's an opportunity. So yeah, I'm, I'm still deep into it as much as I can be.